All right, so let's uh, get to the top three things to watch next week. But before we do, what we need to do is we're going to just do a very fast summary of what we covered last week. Let's do it. So the first thing we talked about was treasury bonds and gold. Are they really breaking out? And the answer is yes. Yes. That was a real doubt. And it's not going to stop yet. There you go. He's you know, I know you're 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 an eager beaver to to. No, no, I'm not fade. fading either one of those. And, and in fact, all right, I don't so want to gooch it and tell you that like all I, right. I'm not I am not short bonds, which to me is like you, like, like you hugely long. Like that's about <laughs> as long as I get. It's just not to be short. <laughs> yeah. All right, there you go. But so uh, the, there was a multiple FOMC speakers that ended up, up and... not being as important as we thought, like or as I thought. Like let's <laughs> clearly we that. thought something was going to yeah. be important. Listen, and really the reality was... is that you're right. They didn't say anything new and stuff like that. But number one ended up being huge, and I and I was the one who picked number one. So I'm going to yeah. take credit for this. Yeah. European and US PMIs. Forget about European, but US PMIs today shit the bed like it's not even close pmis came in under 50 which means it's contractionary yeah and one of the things you have to understand is that pmis are actually some of the fastest indicators in terms of giving you feedback on the economy and what's clear now is that the economy is slowing way quicker than anyone in, you know anticipated yeah i see that kudlow larry kudlow uh trump's economic advisor i don't know what he does but anyways he was on cnbc trying to talk up the Atlanta Fed GDP now indicator. And if there's ever a garbage indicator, this is it. Like this thing is just like like this thing is the most useless. Does it comes from piece. Atlanta. Yeah, well, no, it's not that. <laughs> Listen, we like Atlanta. Like you go, you go Hot to Atlanta. You go to the aquarium, you go to the Coke store or the Coke uh, kind of museum and then there's nothing else to do. But anyways, I I this this is a terrible indicator. People use it and I, every time anyone uses it, I just kind of laugh. But the point is that today's rally in the bonds really like the breakout was created by this PMI number. And that's yeah. the thing you need to know. It was the number thing, one thing to watch. And we were right. And we you were, were right to choose it. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. So let's look at next week. Next week. So just this was overlapping what we talked about during talking charts. And one of the interesting things to me is, is that from the inner markets, you're seeing – all of the things that you would traditionally see on an equity breakdown and the equities are not breaking down. Now, they, you could argue because there's this big options expiry that you had this, uh, this gamma pin. And so one of the things that's going to be really interesting now that that kind of um, a liquidity uh, pin is, is gone, the question here in my mind is, is do equities next week start to react to the way that these inner markets have been moving. Are we finally going to see the beginning of some sort of a meaningful reversion of, or I don't want to use the word uh, like crash or something, but like the markets have been running for the first part of the year and, and they're overdue for a throwback, right? Yeah. So Patrick, I think it's a great one to put in our top thing, three things to watch next week. And one of the, the people that articulated this kind of phenomenon, what's happening lately, the best is my buddy Alex Gurvich. <laughs> and I kind of use that kind of facetiously. Gurevich. Alex is usually on the other side of my trades because that guy um, loves bonds. Like he's he loves wrong. bonds. He's been right, sorry. He's been right. He's been right for sure. And uh, I love Alex in that he's very By the way, because he was right, that means that you've been wrong. Oh, I guess you're right, Patrick. <laughs> anyway, Thanks sorry. Pointing that just out pointing that out. Uh, but he wrote this thing, and I, and I retweeted this because it was brilliant. He said, for the f- last few weeks, we've been experiencing a risk-off environment in every aspect of financial markets except risky assets. And what does that mean? We've seen bonds go up. We've seen copper, crude go down. Cool. We've seen all sorts of things happen like that. And yet stocks have been impervious and just yeah. continue to hang in there. And whether this is the start of them finally waking up is something that you need to watch for next week. Yeah. I'm My sure. bet is it is. Uh, you know what? Uh, and I think that uh, one, uh, as we, so uh, I don't want to get into a big thing, but like it's become very, a lot of the people that have been buying the upside of the stock market have been doing so uh, as renters. And a lot of option strategies have been the one of the ways that a lot of traders have gotten upside equity exposure because they really don't want to commit to being long, long term, they just have it's, uh, performance. Uh, sorry, it's career risk. It's like they they need to be long the market. And so, how do how do I get long the market in some way 
um, and participate. So I think that there's reluctant bulls, which is they're long only because it's been working and they have to be in. And and so as we get into option expiration, a lot of gamma rolls off. It's going to be really interesting to see whether or not we are uh, we're going to see uh, finally a risk off moment start to kick in. Uh, and Patrick, one of the things is that as the U.S. dollar has rallied, it's forced more and more people into U.S. stock markets. Yeah. And so everyone's been rushing from yeah. all, all around the world <laughs> into the U.S. And I see that a lot of the kind of milkshake uh, disciples out there are all <laughs> over this trade. They're just Brent, like, that was you, buddy. Yeah. And, and listen, it's been right. But I contend that the rise in the U.S. dollar will eventually sow the seeds of the decline in the stock market. All right, you heard it here from Kevin. First. Okay, number two. So what number do you got? two. So I wanted to just touch on these semiconductors, right? And one of the one of the things that I, I've always identified with semiconductors is they are more than most sectors within the uh, within the markets. They have a very boom bust tendency, and the volatility in the semiconductor space is incredibly pronounced. And um, and semiconductors have really been uh, a uh, strong performer. And uh, they, they have run and, uh, part, you know, like I'm looking at the SMH was the ETF for it. But, I mean, if you, let's say, look at an AMD, which is um, advanced micro devices, uh, you can see here. It's that been the poster child of this last it's rally. Been, it's been a huge run, yeah. right? Like, I mean, this thing went from 27 bucks to 59 It's a, it's a double in like five months. I don't know, but that looks like a bearish engulfing. Oh, stop it! Swan no, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, don't even try to pull your technical shit out. <laughs> the uh, the point though, uh, that, on, that, I don't know, but a lot of the red in that. Yeah, red, yeah, you just see red. That, like that mean that means something in your technical world, Patrick. <laughs> uh, so so the point though is 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 that uh, uh, the semiconductors. I'm watching this because they are they are far more volatile, and and I think that if truly we're going risk off, semis will sell. Uh, is my call on that. And so watching what they do next week is one of our top three things. So number one, though, we have to still talk about this uh, coronavirus. Yeah. Right? I, I, Patrick, and, I completely agree. Um, it, it's the number one thing. And the question is, is it expanded throughout the rest of the world? It's huge. Like, it, because because the all of the algos were trying to pick up news that were trying to identify whether shit in China has crested. Like, what have we seen? The exponential rise, kind of peak out. Are we seeing seeing the turn? It's one of those things that everyone was watching. But if new epicenters are are sprouting all over the world, and and the, this thing is only beginning to sl uh, to slow global growth, um, the thing is is that this could be a drag for many months if it's leaving China. And I I completely agree, Patrick. The market you did in a couple of weeks ago, but anyway. No, okay, but listen. But you're, you're who's, you're who's writing the short sell tickets at better prices? Me or the guys that were panicking two weeks ago? Fair enough, right? Like we're we're we've gone up. I I contend that one of the things is that you have to sit there and watch the information. And yes, we were, we got a wave of kind of monetary stimulus that's pushed it higher. But now we're in a situation where that's already priced in. Like yeah. we've gotten all the good news. And my question to you is how much more can they push it up before the reality of the situation kind of kicks in? Right. 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 And I just, I, Patrick, I'm scared about the, the supply chain. I think that we're underestimating. The well, th this is why the semiconductors are up there because the, uh, the world in that space, like, you know, Apple's warning was an example of that, but like they're all interconnected. One supplies another there. And, and this global supply chain it's on this idea that it can run seamlessly. I mean, if if we have a scenario where, well, what if one area shut down, but then as it starts running, this a second area where it was supposed to be supplying gets shut down, right? Like there's there's you don't know how like this coronavirus can interrupt the supply chain, and I won't don't even want to speculate, but we have to watch it. That's got to be the number one thing to watch next week for sure. I 100% agree with you, Patrick. I think that the market has underestimated the problems of half of Asia being uh, shut down. Right. Anyway, so that is the uh, the top things to watch next week. So.